In this video, we consider what we've learned about the transformer encoder and highlight some of the key differences compared to CNNs and RNNs, with the ambition to provide insights to why transformers have been so successful for languages. Convolutional neural networks, or CNNs for short, yield amazing performance in various applications involving images, 3D point clouds, and more. Roughly speaking, to compute the output from a convolutional layer at a certain position, we multiply the input features with a filter kernel. Two properties are particularly interesting when comparing CNNs with transformers. First, that the filters are applied locally and therefore only identify local features. For instance, in this toy example, the filter looks for local vertical edges in the input image, which is why the output takes its maximum value 5 when we take the dot product between the filter and the bottom left corner of the image. Note that when computing the feature at a certain position, we only consider a 3x3 three three region around that position. Second, weights depend on the relative position between the pixel where we center the filter and the pixel for which we want to compute the weight. For instance, in our toy example, the pixel to the right of the center pixel has weight 1, whereas the pixel below the center pixel has weight 0. Common CNNs also have several other important properties, such as weight sharing, pooling layers to downsample the image, and so on, but these are less important for our discussion. Now, looking for local features like this, and then combining those features in deeper layers, probably makes sense for images where the parts of a face or a vehicle generally have similar relative positions in all images but it seems less natural in other contexts, such as languages. Consider the following two sentences. This book was written by Yuan, and Yuan wrote this book. Without going into too much detail, we note that words can be reordered without changing the meaning of the sentence substantially. It may therefore be questionable to assign weights depending on relative position of words. Here is another related sentence. This book, which is about a girl from India, was written by Yuan. In spite of its simplicity, we start to imagine that it may not be ideal to focus on local features, since closely connected words like written and book may end up far apart depending on how we formulate the sentence. As we have already mentioned, transformers are not local, Instead, they consider the entire input, and weights do not explicitly depend on relative position. Now, recurrent neural networks, or RNNs for short, have been used to model sequences with remarkable accuracy in various contexts, including dynamical models in reinforcement learning, language, and handwritten text. In short, RNNs generally have a hidden state which is fed back into the network along with the new input at each time step. For instance, we compute the hidden state h1 by passing the original hidden state h0 and the input x1 through the neural network. The new hidden state h1 is then passed back into the network along with the new input x2. The same procedure is then repeated until the end of the sequence. A first property that we can observe is that the hidden state only depends on the input up until the current time. For instance, in the example, she went to the bank of the river, the hidden state, which is also the feature vector, computed when we input the word embedding for bank, therefore only knows that she went to a bank and has no means of knowing that it is in fact a river bank instead of a financial institution. This is potentially problematic depending on the task that we want to solve. A related property is that states are computed in order, that is, in the order that we present the sequence to the network. A consequence of this is that the network may need to remember things for many time steps, which can be challenging. If we revisit the example, this book, which is about a girl from India, 
was written by u1. We note that there is no way for the feature vectors of written and book to interact directly. Instead, the hidden state needs to go through several state updates in between. And there is a risk that the network fails to remember that we are talking about a book and not an article or a post-it note. The fact that information is processed sequentially may actually also slow down training since calculations cannot be parallelized. And we will return to this in a later video. As you have seen, at least the encoder in the transformer does not have the same sequential structure as an RNN and therefore avoids these potential drawbacks. Naturally, RNNs have a number of other important properties such as shared weights at all time steps and the ability to handle input and output sequences of variable lengths. It should also be mentioned that there are other types of RNNs such as the bidirectional RNNs but we'll limit this discussion to some types of RNNs for simplicity. To understand some of the main differences between transformers and CNNs and RNNs, let us briefly summarize a few essential properties of the transformer encoder. First of all, we have seen that the encoder takes a set of vectors as input and returns a new set of vectors. Specifically, the encoder doesn't actually care about how the input vectors are ordered. This may be a reasonable property for languages, since words can often be reordered without substantially changing the meaning of the sentence. Note that this is very different compared to how CNNs work, where the weights are defined as a function of the relative position. Also, for each input vector, it returns a new vector that depends on all the input vectors. Compared to the RNNs, this means that feature vectors can depend on words that appear later in the sentence. As an example, the word bank could receive a feature vector that includes the fact that it is a river bank. The encoder also has a number of other properties, perhaps most importantly that it is a deep structure where deeper layers perform self-attention on the updated word embeddings. The comparison to RNNs is important, so let us elaborate on it just a bit further. I mentioned previously that RNNs may forget about things from earlier in the text. This is closely related to vanishing gradients, and we can look at a small example to understand this better. Suppose this video has received the review, Terrible Video by Lanart and that you would like to use an RNN to classify the review as positive, negative or neutral. Clearly, in this case the word terrible is important for understanding the sentiment of this review. The main problem is that the sequence is processed sequentially and every time we compute a new hidden state it needs to capture the essence of the entire input sequence that we have seen so far. This means that there is a risk that new inputs will eventually wash away the influence of the first word and for longer sequences you may eventually obtain a hidden state that takes the same value regardless of the input at time 1. In more technical terms, the fact that RNNs may forget about earlier input vectors is closely related to problems with vanishing gradients since if the hidden state at one time instance does not change if we change the input at time 1, then this actually means that the derivative of that hidden state with respect to the input at time 1 is 0. From the perspective of backprop, vanishing gradients means that the gradients become weaker as we pass them backwards in time. I've illustrated that here with red arrows that become thinner as we move backwards in time. You can imagine that we are computing derivatives of a loss that depends on the output at time 4 with respect to the different hidden states and that a thick arrow means strong derivatives. Naturally, the challenges with vanishing gradients generally grow as the sequences become longer since we need to pass the gradients through more of these nonlinearities. In this example, vanishing gradients would have the unfortunate consequence that we wouldn't know how to adjust our weights to obtain a better hidden state at time 1, which probably would prevent us from solving the problem well.
Using the transformer, we avoid many of these problems. For instance, we would not forget about the input at time 1 to the same extent, even if the input sequence is very long, since we always maintain one vector per word. Self-attention does not suffer from the same issues with vanishing gradients, since the connection to words far away in the sequence is much more direct. For instance, if we look at the calculations performed in a single self-attention layer, we have that y4 is the sum over j of vj times wj4, where vj is simply wv times xj, and v1 is wv times x1. As you can see, the connection between the output at time 4 and the input at time 1, here denoted x1, is much more direct compared to in an RNN. The point that I'm trying to make here is that there are two closely related problems, vanishing gradients and the inability to remember things for many time steps. RNNs suffer from both of these problems to varying degrees, whereas the encoder in the transformer provides a strategy to avoid them.